Hi, this is Michael from Part-Time Permates. So today we're gonna to do a quick um, mini cooking demonstration. We are using uh, all local products, I believe, except for our Pecorino cheese, which is local to somewhere, being Italy. Um, everything else is pretty much from our garden. Uh, we're gonna be doing a, oh, and we have some foraged mushrooms. So we're gonna be doing a foraged mushroom pasta. Be doing a forage mushroom pasta with some eggplant and leeks and uh, some little basil tops um, and then we're going to be preparing it in a nice um, rustic semolina pasta and um, we're gonna make a light cream sauce for it and then finish it with some cheese forage mushrooms I had some from last week and I had some from yesterday so we were able to go foraging with uh, our friend Navi as part of a group and found quite a few mushrooms. Uh, the most abundant right now is coming off a wet spell. It's getting dry again, so we're not gonna have many more. We have a really nice oyster mushroom. This is a summer oyster mushroom that um, was growing on down maples. And uh, we had some earlier that were really delicate and really wet and soft. These are a little more structured, which are kind of nice. So we have uh, these honey mushrooms. These have matured a lot more because the other ones were, um, I think we did a previous little video clip, little domes, and then some of them really opened up and flared out. Because they were growing in the really moist time after this couple days of rain. And these have browned out, they've firmed up. They're actually a little easier to store and work with. The other ones were very sensitive, but it's the same variety. However, we do work with a professional forager, as we've said before, so uh, I don't use my own expertise on uh, selecting these. Uh, we get them verified and work with people that uh, know more than we do about it. So I've cleaned these mushrooms. Uh, my preference for cleaning mushrooms is to just uh, wipe them of any um, heavy debris, uh, dirt, look for bugs, slugs, slugs really like these and remove them. If I have to plunge them in water quickly to uh, rinse them, I will, but many times I can just kind of wipe them free of almost all the dirt, which is what I've done. I have some um, little Asian style eggplants that we grow uh, that I just diced up. They're, they're little, little guys about that big. Um, really nice and flavorful. I have uh, half of a leek. Actually, we didn't grow this leek. We, we've grown leeks in the past, but this was a leek from, um, from the market. Our sauce is going to be a cream sauce. I've made a bechamel. I started that in advance. So this was a, just under a quarter stick of butter. It was about uh, two and a half, three ounces of flour. And so I melted the butter, uh, being careful not to burn it. I added in the flour, I stirred it so it made a roux. And then I poured in milk. Um, I've got a few cups of milk here. Two, two and a half cups of milk. Um, this is a medium to thick roux because I can always thin it with pasta water and the vegetables and the mushrooms will probably give off some water. I've added um, salt, pepper, white and black pepper and a little bit of nutmeg. Um, so this is your, your base starting to a cream sauce or a cheese sauce or a variety of other things. So this is prepared. I kept it stirring. I let it simmer on low heat for about 20 minutes. So the flour is cooked out. It's not lumpy and um, that'll make a real nice rich sauce. At this point, I'm gonna saute the mushrooms. I want a really hot pan. I want a pan that is, when I put the oil in, it starts to smoke moderately. I don't want it heavy smoking in danger of having it flare up and, and cause uh, you know, causes flame. Um, and again, if you're putting a, wash, uh, a wet mushroom in, you're at more risk of causing a flare up anytime something's wet and it's real hot oil. But I do want this quite hot. Um, I like to get my pan hot first and then add my oil because I don't want my oil to break down. So I'm working with a olive oil blend. It's a canola, grapeseed, and olive oil blend. I could use a 100% olive oil, extra virgin here also. Um, what I'm gonna do is cook these probably in two batches quickly. Mushrooms, not only does the pan need to be really hot, you need to recover the pan heat. So using a heavy steel pan is better than an aluminum pan. Uh, you'll get a better sear on um, a pan that is not nonstick. I'm using cast iron. I like it because it's like a sponge. It holds a lot of heat and it gives me the opportunity to gather heat sitting on the stove and then transfer it into the mushrooms so that I don't cool down too much. 
if I cool down a lot, my pan is going to become, um, I'm gonna start steaming my mushrooms. They're gonna give off water and they're gonna be steaming. And I want them to be flavorful. I want them to dehydrate in the pan and get crispy and browned. Choice of pan, a good heat source. And uh, if you don't have a real good pan and a real good heat source, just use less, do very, do very few at a time. I've got a pretty heavily smoking pan, that's okay. That's just some residual oils. So when I add my oil, to do it off the heat. I'm gonna add a reasonable amount. Um, it's gonna cool the pan. And I don't add my oil first because I don't want my oil breaking down. Transfer that heat. So the reason we use a reasonable amount of olive oil is it allows the transfer of heat between the pan and the cooking item. Yep, see. Too much water, it's gonna aerosol that grease and it's gonna catch on fire, especially if you're on open flame. I prefer gas, we happen to be on electric today. So what I like to do, Put them in, reasonable amount. It's gonna suck up the oil like a sponge. It'll give back most of it. I'm just gonna saute it or jump it for a second. I'm really just coating the oil. And then, some tongs here. I'm gonna let it, and then I'm gonna let it sit down and sear. So I am um, browning the mushrooms, which are gonna increase the flavor and draw out the flavor. And I'm also starting to uh, dehydrate them. I'm removing water, which means I'm concentrating uh, my mushroom flavor. In flavor, we tasted them. They're earthy, they're mild, they're lightly sweet and a little fragrant, a little, a little bit funky, but no strange, crazy flavors here, um, which is, is good. But we're gonna get a more concentrated flavor than we would on, say, a white cultivated mushroom. And even these oyster mushrooms will have a little more intense flavor than a cultivated oyster mushroom. You can use a spatula or tongs or whatever. I'm just gonna move them around a little bit. Just trying to make sure I'm, I'm searing them in a couple different places. You can burn them. Um, but I'm more concerned about low heat than high heat for the most part. cook these down too much because they're going to get additional cooking time when they go in the sauce. Uh, I'm getting some nice browning and searing almost to the point of burning here a little bit which is that's good. And notice the oil has pretty much dissipated. It swallowed up most of that oil. That's why I want to use a good flavorful high quality healthy oil because it's going to be a component in my sauce and that flavor is going to stand out. Um, a little fresh ground pepper, a little salt. I like the salt at the end. So salt draws out water. So if I'm fighting with too much water, too much moisture in a mushroom, the last thing I want to do is salt it right away. Interestingly, Italian cuisine, they tend to eat a lot less meat than we do uh, because meat's expensive, but also the um, care and quality. Oh, by the way, I tend to take these oysters. I just can tear them into petals if they're a little too big. I just release them. I like a real natural tearing. I don't usually cut them, but I could. I did remove any of the tougher stems. Uh, yeah, so Italians use a lot less meat primarily because it's more expensive, but they also care a lot more about the flavor and quality of it, how it's um, produced, because the way it's produced it creates different flavors using wild boar, using game meat, different birds, and things that we use, uh, lamb, etc. all important. So, the way you make up for that is you're using a lot of vegetables. Uh, if you're combining it with pasta, you just use a smaller quantity. So you want a more fragrant, uh, higher quality meat or cured prepared meat or sausage. Um, but also because I'm using pasta, that creates a lot of starch. So I'm, use, I'm eating less fat, I'm eating less protein, uh, meat driven protein. So I'm gonna look for protein sources in my vegetables. And I'm gonna look for a lot of my fat sources to balance my menu. Um, using a lot of olive oil and other um, vegetable based oils and so I'm less concerned about how much oil I use here because like in this case we're not going to use any meat. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I am going to saute my leeks and my eggplant. Eggplant has a lot of water, leeks are moderate. Um, I will use the residual heat and, and uh, flavors from the mushrooms in here. Eggplants really absorb oil. You need to cook them. You need to get some oil in there. Right. 
turn my heat down a little bit. Back burner is going. This, I don't mind a little browning, but I'm gonna put a little less, a little less on. I, I'm gonna start cooking the pasta. I need about 10 minutes on this. Um, that's a little under a pound. Bechamel, the, the milk sauce. Um, I, sometimes you could add a little onion to the base or a little garlic or something like that. Um, and, and flavor your, your sauce. I don't really need to because I happen to have this leek here. I'm gonna use that. You add onion to a bechamel, it's called a soubise. Soubise sauce. Um, but then sometimes you gotta grind up your onion or you wanna strain it out if you wanna keep it smooth. So we're gonna let this cook on moderate heat, allowing not only a little bit of searing at first, but we're gonna allow it to kind of sweat um, both the leeks and the eggplant, which are gonna develop some really nice flavor. So we got two types, we got this purple eggplant, and these small, really small, uh, traditional black uh, skinned eggplant. Yeah, so this pasta is gonna cook for the seven, uh, about 10 minutes. I'm gonna strain it out. I will try and reserve a little bit of the cooking water, salted cooking water, so, if I find when I add everything together, the mushrooms, the vegetables, and the sauce, if I find it's a little too thick, I'm gonna have a little reserved cooking water, hopefully, to uh, stir in. Just add my mushrooms back in. Uh, I turn the heat off. I'm just gonna basically hold them warm. This way we're gonna meld our flavors together. We've got oniony flavors, we've got mushroom flavors. Um, the eggplant is, it has a flavor, but it's more neutral, but it's a really nice texture and filler. Uh, eggplant is very underutilized in American cooking, uh, although around the world it's so popular. Uh, we just have a hard time understanding how to cook it properly. When I'm going to lightly season everything again, um, my goal is always to season each major component so that it tastes good by itself. The chance of if you have all your components tasting good by themselves, that when you bring them together, they'll need a minimal adjustment is um, pretty good. The, uh, if I have something that's really, really salty and something that's completely unseasoned, I have a little more guesswork to do. So I do not want this too salty because my pecorino cheese is, is quite salty. That's my finishing um, condiment. Try to check my pasta. It's getting close. Still got a little bit of chew, although I always want my pasta to have quite a bit of chew. We tend to overcook our pasta. And we have to compensate for the time after we strain it out where it continues to cook, where it continues to cook with the sauce. So um, I'm not far out right now. I don't want it to have a crunch to it, um, but I want to have a real nice, um, the traditional al dente, which we call, um, it's like toothsomeness or toothy, that we get a, a bite to it. There's a lot of ways to translate it, but uh, I think a lot of us know when you have that slight chew that's just right, and not too much, not too soft, we're gonna be able to achieve that um, in a moment here. I'm gonna pour a portion of my sauce in here. This sauce could be stored for a few days and you could add cheese to it and make a macaroni and cheese or you could do all kinds of stuff with it. It's not extremely expensive because I didn't use heavy cream. The buttermilk's a little expensive so if you, whether you save it or you use it all or throw a little bit. my hot pasta. There's a lot of ways to toss it or garnish the top of it. We're, we're doing it kind of home style. We're going to stir it in gently. I'm going to break the pasta up. So this is a little bit thick. It's a little bit heavy on the sauce. That's American style. We like, we like a lot of sauce and a lot of garnish. Um, traditional Italian is a lot 
more a balance between the pasta and the sauce, meaning it usually is not a soup or drowned or coated in it. It's uh, you get a lot of pasta and you get a decent amount of garnish and you get a nice, uh, nice sauce. Prepared a portion that I guess is somewhere between an appetizer and an entree. Now we eat a lot of pasta, we consider it a whole meal uh, frequently, but in Italy it's a it's a piece of the meal frequently and you eat a little less, just it's uh, have some form of pasta frequently with most meals, sometimes a couple times a day. Put a lot of basil on here. These are just basil tops. And then uh, cheese is optional. Pecorino is an Italian cheese. Um, pecorino simply means sheep uh, cheese in Italian. So it's gonna come from sheep's milk. Uh, you'll get a little bit of a um, grassiness, earthiness. You uh, get a little bit of a gaminess slightly. Those are all nice things in a pasta. Uh, it's very salty. This is pressed and very salty. It is the typical cheese for grating and putting on to a pasta. Um, it is about a quarter of the price of Parmigiano Reggiano and about half the price of a Grana Padano. So you're gonna save money, but because it's firm, it's, it's sharp, it's a little bit um, acidic and it's very salty, it's excellent for putting on pasta. Uh, Parmigiano Reggiano has a lot of those same qualities, but not quite as salty. A lot of times to cut the cost and actually improve the flavor. So I believe we're doing a better job in flavor, not just uh, cheaper. I don't have any of my fancy cheese graters or grinders out today. We're just gonna do it home style. And, and this is pretty salty. It's gonna add that extra flavor and finish off the... A lot of pecorino on there. We like cheese. That's it. Here we go, forage mushrooms, a um, little quick bechamel cream sauce, and uh, some eggplants, and everything is, uh, except for the cheese, is coming from our local area. I am going to finish the pasta in this pan, so what I'll end up doing is... Hey, dude. <laughs> Are we supposed to be touching the dog when we're cooking? Not really. He goes, I'm clean enough. Okay. He goes, I'd like some more food because I just finished my breakfast. You're waiting for something. Really? You think it's time for that? What do you think it's time for? Plastic semolina pasta. And Hi, Jelly. Did you want something? Come on, Moon Dog. Hey, puppy.